Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Super Churchill today delivered an emotional speech that moved Raila Amolo Odinga and Uhuru Muge Kenyatta to tears. And at no time as we entertain the excuses we are being told about debts, about this, we must hold this leadership to account. And so on behalf of the civil society, we are here to express our solidarity and assure you that we are together in this struggle. And we are ready to train because we believe with a few more demonstrations come October 6th when the women farmers of Paris broke into the palace. We too must break into the palace. We must break into the palace and frog march the empire. And sing just like the women sang. You know how they sang? Today, we have the baker. The baker was the emperor himself. Being frog marched by peasants on the streets of Paris. And they sang. Today, we have the baker. We have the baker's wife and the baker's son. Today, we are going to have bread. And I want you to mark this. That speech is going to land Suba Churchill in trouble. Kenya Kwanza government are going to go after Suba Churchill after watching this video. And we cannot therefore afford, even for a moment, to allow political novices to throw insults at everybody and think that that is governance. Because our constitution demands of them to ensure that we are governed properly. Kenyans are easy to govern, but very difficult to rule. And that's why this leadership is in trouble. Because they are trying to rule us. We are beyond being ruled. We want to be governed. We must remain firm and demand good governance. Suba Churchill is one of the key players in the civil society in the Republic of Kenya. And if you paid very close attention to his speech, he is clearly the link between the civil, so civil society, between the civil society in Kenya and the ICC. As a sector, we continue to monitor this. I was in Wate on the 19th. When the young man, the young boy was shot, I was in Wate. And every time there is a demonstration, I make an effort to go to any of those epicenters of the action to document. And we are in touch with the United Nations. We are in touch with Clement Vol, the UN Rapporteur for Freedom of Assembly and Association. He's a personal friend. We constantly do our statements and share so that he's kept abreast and does not buy the lie we are being told today. We have been told 130 plus police stations. All police stations in this country are gazetted. We want to be told which stations are those. And from Suba Churchill's speech, it is clear that the civil society are now lining behind Raila Amolo Odinga. When Uhuru Kenyatta took over, especially after the handshake, the civil society, who have always stood by Raila Amolo Odinga, left him. So I want you to pay very close attention to this speech by Suba Churchill. And let me know your thoughts. And tomorrow I'll do a critical analysis about the same speech. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, religious sector, and my colleagues from the civil society present, on behalf of the organized civil society, I join you all in prayer for the repose of the souls of our brothers and sisters who lost their lives as we have all seen in the struggle for a better Kenya. As a civil society actor who has been there for years, over 25, I must say that we last witnessed these scenes several years gone by. 
and it did not occur to us as a sector that ever again will have a leadership that is driven by parano paranoia, that is constantly hallucinating about people undermining their authority. What happened to our brothers and sisters happened out of fear. And that's why people are always repulsed from the city center. It is not about protection of property. Because we have seen government watch as goons and their political insiders raid farms, steal livestock. We have seen them display the audacity to sell those livestock on the roadside for a whole day. Yet every day we are told about protection of property. Let them tell that story to the birds. Because as a sector, we are happy that you are documenting some of these atrocities. Because documentation is the first step towards holding these dictators to account. As a sector, we have spoken and will continue to speak against these excesses. And we know that they are driven by fear. The fear of the Parisian mob. We all remember the French Revolution. When women farmers from Paris and this environment marched on the streets to the palace in Versailles. That is what they fear. That is our, why our brothers and sisters have lost their lives. Because the emperor is living in fear. Fear of the Parisian mob. But we must continue to drive courage because the strategy is to instill fear in us. To kill and maim because they think that they are sending a powerful message. Despite the sorrow, even as we condole with the families, the blood that you have seen on the screen that our 27 plus brothers and sisters have lost must not give us fear but courage. Initially, your strategy was to congregate in Nairobi. But we must congratulate you for now devising a strategy that spreads them out and thin. As a sector, we continue to monitor this. I was in Wate on the 19th. When the young man, the young boy was shot, I was in Wate. And every time there is a demonstration, I make an effort to go to any of those epicenters of the action. To document. And we are in touch with the United Nations. We are in touch with Clement Vol, the UN Rapporteur for Freedom of Assembly and Association. He's a personal friend. We constantly do our statements and share so that he's kept abreast and does not buy the lie we are being told today. We have been told 130 plus police stations. All police stations in this country are gazetted. We want to be told which stations are those. We have been told about police who have also lost their lives at the hands of protesters. We want them to hold a similar requiemass for those police that have been killed. Because we cannot run a government purely on lies. That people can lie from January 1st to December 31st and feel nothing about it. Our constitution, which I was privileged to be part of its making at the Bomas Constitutional Conference, has in Article 10, national values and principles of governance. Calling for human dignity for patriotism, for devolution and sharing of power. But every day we see our leadership on the stage, they're announcing things that should best be left for cabinet secretaries. I don't know the release of this march to counties. The launch of this and that. So as a sector, we want to say that we are in solidarity 
with this struggle because we know what it stands for. And you must have seen our sector speak on a daily basis on some of these excesses. And we must hold to account those that will be found culpable and their commanders, including acts of omission, that when you fail to protect property, when you go harassing a former head of state, Man Stivo, you are here as a veteran diplomat, tell His Excellency President Ruto and the novices around him that harassing a former head of state has implications not just in the country, but in the region. <laughs> that stability of this country is relied upon by neighboring countries like Somalia, like Sudan, South Sudan. They look to us to help them come out of their own self-inflicted troubles. And we cannot therefore afford, even for a moment, to allow political novices to throw insults at everybody and think that that is governance. Because our constitution demands of them to ensure that we are governed properly. Kenyans are easy to govern but very difficult to rule. And that's why this leadership is in trouble. Because they are trying to rule us. We are beyond being ruled. We want to be governed. We must remain firm and demand good governance. Because that is the only thing that is provided for under our constitution. We must tell them and we must begin to plan. Your Excellency, the former Prime Minister, I saw you being invited in a tweet, in, with all due respect, surely. Treat that tweet with the contempt it deserves because you stand for the cause of the majority of this country. We must not talk to these people, not over the blood of people that we have been shown here. And of course, when you talk, if you must, they say when you are eating with the devil, you must use a long spoon. Their blood is oozing with innocent blood of Kenyans that they have killed. You must never shake their hands because their hands are still dripping with guilt. And that's why everywhere they go, they defend themselves. Oh, the police, the police did this. We must hold them to account. But what is more worrying to us as a sector is that there is a marauding group of police officers always deployed in strategic places and stations to kill, to maim. And their language, We must use our counterintelligence to define who they are, to establish who they are, the faces behind those people, and hold them to account. Because holding them to account, we must. We must ensure that this country is restored to the glory that previous leaders have been able to steer it. And at no time must we entertain the excuses we are being told about debts, about this. We must hold this leadership to account. And so on behalf of the civil society, we are here to express our solidarity and assure you that we are together in this struggle. And we are ready to train because we believe with a few more demonstrations come October 6th when the women farmers of Paris broke into the palace. We too must break into the palace. We must break into the palace and frogmatch the empire. And sing just like the women sang. You know how they sang? Today, we have the baker. The baker was the emperor himself. Being frogmatched by peasants on the streets of Paris. And they sang. Today, we have the baker. We have the baker's wife and the baker's son. Today, we are going to have bread. Because my pastor said, that at no time during his growth was he ever trained to be eating 
avocado for lunch. We are being told to grow avocado. Since when did any one of us here place a plate of avocado as a meal before our children? Because they want to import the maize. They don't want us to grow it. They want to import it. And therefore, as a sector, we want to say that we are ready to train the demonstrators so that you can identify also the people who infiltrate you. That's part of what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Equipping you with knowledge and skills on how to identify these crooks that pretend to be demonstrating in your midst, yet holding a gun to terminate your life. We are ready to do that. We are ready to sit with the leadership of those cells of people that organize protesters because these protests must continue. But we cannot bow to the whims of those who want to cow us into submission and think that they are the greatest leaders that have ever lived. We must put them where they belong because they have a history of violence, of killing. The tragedy we did on August 9th, 2022, was to put people into leadership with no history at all. They were born, they lived, and they are waiting to die. That's it. They have no history in this struggle for change. The only history you can talk about them is something called Youth for Kanu 92. And that's why they continue to deceive our brothers and sisters in the Mount Kenya region with handouts because that is the only politics they know. Nothing to empower people. To emancipate people from the economic hardships. And then they turn around and say they want to eradicate radicalism. Yet between 2008 and 2022, all they did was to give young boys and girls handouts to take illicit brew. And so as I finish, I want to say that as a sector, we are ready to work with you hand by hand, side by side in this struggle. To ensure that those who are guilty of acts of omission and commission are held to account. And we must never fear. I know they have withdrawn your security. I know they have also withdrawn your security. But I keep asking myself during my life in activism. When was it the most vulnerable time in my life? I was most vulnerable when I was in my mother's womb. When I was a toddler. When I could not know who the enemy is, I want to assure you, your excellencies, former president and former prime minister, that this is not the most vulnerable part of your life. You can live with or without that security. Because you now know who the enemies are. So don't succumb. Don't give in to the invitations that are given with a sneer of arrogance that have no respect for citizens. I get concerned when a leader of a country only thinks of Kupanga, Hawanitawapang. We are not objects. We are subjects with dignity. Hatutaki Kupangwa. And if that is the mentality, try it in Uganda. Try it in Ethiopia. There are things that you cannot do in this republic without being held to account. Thank you very much.